tonight on the final score. March is at peak madness levels. After beating Yale in a nail-biting finish, we saw another LSU game come down to the wire against Maryland, with the Tigers searching for their first Sweet 16 bid since 2006. Plus, LSU Gymnastics took to New Orleans and managed to three-feet as SEC champions, starting their postseason off on the right foot before they host a regional in two weeks' time. We'll break that down and much more. The final score starts right now. Welcome to the final score. I'm Caroline Fenton and she's Lily Fontenot. And as we mentioned off the top, the Stick Queens won their third consecutive SEC championship on Saturday night. But we would be remiss if we didn't start with LSU basketball. The Tigers faced Maryland Saturday morning with a spot in the Sweet 16 on the line. And it was a wild game filled with late drama, which people not used to watching LSU basketball this season may have found exciting. But for loyal Tiger fans used to watching this team, they know that crazy has become the norm. Let's take you back to Saturday in Jacksonville. It's in the East Maryland coming off of an emotional Fernando win against and Belmont. Williams. And although Maryland did win the tip-off, it was the Tigers who had the hot start during the first half leading by as many as 15 points at one point. Here, Tremont Waters extends the lead with this layup. The Tigers lead 26 to 15. Waters had 12 points and five assists. Javante Smart also had a great night and boosted LSU's hot streak in the first half with this layup here. After halftime, LSU still had the lead, which was added onto with this three from Darius Days. However, in typical LSU fashion, the Tigers start to let Maryland back into the game late in the second half. Maryland ties it up at 55 each with only six and a half minutes left. And after going back and forth dur during the entire end of the second half, Skylar Mays hits this go-ahead three with less than a minute left, but do not count out Maryland just yet. They return the favor with another three. LSU gets the ball back on the final possession. Maryland has no timeouts left. And as the clock winds down, who other than Tremont Waters to hit this layup and seal the Tigers' ticket to the Sweet 16. This last-minute win was full of emotions, which all spilled out when the team got back to the locker room. <laughs> The Tigers now move on to face the number two seed in the region, Michigan State. Many people thought the Spartans were deserving of a number one seed, and they are arguably the strongest two seed in the field. After beating Bradley in the first round, the Spartans dominated Minnesota in the second round, winning by 20 points to advance to face LSU. Michigan State is the heavy favorite over the underdog Tigers in the upcoming matchup. The game is on Friday at 6.09 p.m. Central in Washington, D.C. An exciting win for LSU basketball, but let's finally get to gymnastics now as the SEC descended on New Orleans for the conference championships. A conference meet record, over 10,000 fans were on hand as the Tigers stormed back from a late deficit to claim their third league title in as many seasons. The third-ranked Tigers entered the meet as firm favorites and despite a solid start in their first rotation on vault, still found themselves trailing the Florida Gators for the majority of the meet. The one who dragged the Tigers back into contention almost single-handedly was star senior Sarah Finnegan. The AAI Award finalist showed out, clinching an all-around SEC championship for herself, making her just the fourth person to do it, to win multiple individual all-around titles in her career. In addition to the all-around win, Finnegan also earned the bars, beam, and floor titles. The win on beam is the 25th of her career, the most in school history. Finnegan closed out the comeback win with a perfect 10 on the floor, which sent the LSU Tigers contingent into a frenzy. Finnegan was obviously thrilled with the title win, but she knows that her team still has higher targets to aim for in her final emotional season at LSU. You know, one of my goals at the beginning of the season was just to take it all in, embrace it, because it was a short four years, and this is, I mean, my career is almost coming to an end, you know, which is kind of sad to say, but 
I just wanted to take a moment, step back, and really like look around because this is something so special and I'm never going to get it back. And so just enjoying the process and enjoy it till the very end. We're, we haven't peaked yet. We're still going up because um, we still have regionals and nationals and it's going to be such exciting competitions because we're going back in the PMAG. Um, so it's going to be like a home meet again. Um, and then just carrying the momentum that we have caught and finishing strong to nationals. Another woman the Tigers have to thank for this magical night is none other than head coach Dee Dee Bro. The so-called Dean of SEC Coaches isn't the only mastermind behind her team's success, but also played a pivotal role in getting the SEC championships in our backyard of, backyard of New Orleans. Right after the meet, Bro credited her team's resolve and ability to stay in the game despite the early deficit they faced. A hard meet. We started on vaulting and, and Florida was on their best event for their first event and they took a little bit of a lead. We needed to stick one more vault and it would have been almost a, a dead heat right then and then we just we just hung on because we knew we had the potential to, to go ahead on floor and both teams were fabulous on beams. It was it was an amazing meet. The kids were just so into it and fans were incredible and you know it was just absolutely um, I don't know, a high point of the career, you know, it was great. The Tigers will get two weeks off before competing at the NCAA Baton Rouge Regional in the PMAC starting April 5th. The Tigers today were named as the third seed nationally and found out that they will be hosting Auburn, BYU, and others in the regional. After the break, see how former Tigers fared at LSU's Pro Day as they prepare for the NFL Draft. We'll bring you everything from that right after this. Welcome back to the show. As we all are aware of, football is king here in Baton Rouge, and despite it being out of season, it still manages to grab some news time, even, with, on, even on a weekend, with other Tiger teams winning conference championships and advancing to Sweet 16s. We love our football, and LSU football hosted its pro day this weekend, a chance for NFL-bound Tigers to showcase their abilities for, to scouts and team representatives. It was a packed house in the indoor practice facility to see the former Tigers showcase their skills. Pittsburgh Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin was arguably the highest profile attendee. He, along with representatives from all around the league, came to see what LSU stars like Devin White, Greedy Williams, John Battle, and Nick Rosette could do in person. Greedy Williams and Devin White are both projected to be first round picks. Both could possibly even be taken in the top ten. Tight end Foster Morrow arguably had the biggest day as he reportedly impressed a lot of teams, including the New Orleans Saints. Williams and White are outwardly confident about their abilities in the pros and, and think they deserve the first round predictions. Morrow is not projected to be picked as high, however, he thinks he has both the physical and mental toughness to make it in the pros. Take a look. I played two years at LSU with eight picks. I don't think no cornerback, cornerbacks I'm competing with, you know, that's you know, highly up there with me. Got seven. Five, four, three, two, one picks, you know, so the stats don't lie. Like I said, I'm the best. They know I'm the best. You know, I can't I can't compete with guys you know, who talk. Then you pull up the stat line, mine's better. It hasn't been too many linebackers that went in the top five. You know, some went eight, 11, 10. I'm trying to go top five. When y'all catch me in Nashville and the first couple of picks come out, I just know get live 40 would be one of them. Devin's not going to be on the board too long, and we're not going to find Devin, another Devin, in 10 years from now. Like, he's rare because you don't find too many linebackers running 4-4-2 at 240 pounds, jumping 40 years vertical. Like, everything that I do, I feel like you know, I'm the only person that can do that. I'm incredibly aggressive. I'm a bruiser. I'm a finisher. And I got a little bit of speed to me, too, that you, that you don't really expect. My attention to detail and my preparation is kind of what gets me through a week. We'll know the fate of those three Tigers and all the other league hopefuls starting on April 25th when the NFL Draft takes place in Nashville, Tennessee. When we return, we'll discuss how some other LSU teams fared over the weekend. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. We've talked about some LSU teams which seem to be hitting their stride at just the right time, but there are others which have failed to do the same. And yeah, that's right, LSU baseball started the season at number one but has dropped a few spots in the polls throughout the season after some tough fought losses. The now number 12 Tigers are going back to work this week with some tails somewhat between their legs after traveling to Georgia to face the 11th ranked Bulldogs. Things started well with a 1-0 win in game one. Friday night starter Zach Hess was dominant. Zero walks in eight scoreless innings. On Saturday, an explosive Cole Henry on the mound as well with eight Ks and held seven innings with a goose egg on the board for the Bulldogs. 
But the Tigers dropped that game two to nothing. And the next day, a rally behind the plate fell short of a comeback. The Bulldogs secured the Sunday game with a score of 9-7 to and took the series. The Tigers welcome in McNeese State this Tuesday before traveling this weekend to Starkville to take on Mississippi State. We should also mention that LSU softball was in Athens, Georgia as well this past weekend, and they fared much better than the men did, sweeping the host Bulldogs. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Be sure to check out our social media pages or visit TigerTV.tv. I'm Lily Fontenot. And I'm Caroline Fenton. Have a great evening, Tigers.